What's up, guys? I'm Automatic Jack. I'm here with a little more Horus Heresy Legions. Um, ignore Thaddeus Fail over here. He has been a Thaddeus failure for me. I was trying to uh, complete the challenge with some uh, high energy troops. So, we are going to go back. We're going to play a little bit of Asgalon. And we're going to see how things are going over there. I'm going to open this crate. I think uh, there is a decent chance it is going to be. Let's see. Three coins and two cards or voice lines I already have. Let's go. Six coins, looking good so far. Voice line I have, card I have. Hey, you know what? More gems than I thought I'd get. More coins than I thought I'd get. I'm not complaining. What I am complaining about is that I got two, not one, but two experience boosts today during times that I could not play the game. I logged in just to check crates and I got experience boosts. Oh boy, was I pissed. All right, so we've got Realm. We want to go fast. We want to go really fast. We will uh, keep the Lorder for sure, keep the Drilling Site for sure. We do get a Last Stand. Last Stand is very, very good here. Very good. Not quite as good against Realm because he has the three attack. But still quite good. Sorry, one second. All right, so we are going to, let's see, our, our biggest problem here is, so we don't have a way to take both of these guys off. Like, obviously, you know, he he is going to sacrifice one of them for something. It, it is, <laughs> wow, it is going to happen. Um, but we will go ahead and get our counterattack out anyway, partially to distract Raum, because when he's hitting one of these things, yes, he's healing, but he's also not hitting our face. So it's basically the same health trade, except... It, does, it gives us more HP to work with. Sorry, one second, boys. All right, so we are kind of in the same position. We're, we're not exactly loving it like McDonald's. Um, I think, I mean, I guess we can just take one of these off and hope that he can't sacrifice this turn. Maybe he doesn't have an Ashen Circle or something. A douche, Dongus. Nice. A douche. I just noticed your name. Outstanding name, sir. Top, top tier. Absolutely top tier. He does have an Ashen Circle. He does decide to sacrifice. Yeah, well, that would happen regardless, so. Whoa, this is, this is very bad. Yeah, this game is going absolutely nowhere. Where is this game going? Nowhere. All right, well, the only thing that we can realistically do here is drilling sight into Lorder's squad, take this off, take that off, and we're, we're at 15 HP, like fighting a 27 HP realm. Um, maybe, I mean, like, would hitting these guys earlier have done a lot for us? Probably not. Uh, now he has a way to sacrifice these, he'll get chaos spawns. Yeah, this game is, this game is already toast. So, oh my god, oh my god, it's, well... Actually, oh yeah, because yeah, it'll replace that with spawn. Um, we're about five turns away, uh, four four turns away, five, six, seven, and eight. Yeah, so we're four turns away. I had to count on my fingers. Don't blame me. Um, from being able to play the one card that would save us in this situation, we are absolutely bonered here by Hadouche dong us. Hadouche absolutely donged us. That was a particularly, particularly uh, severe ass-kicking from Raum. Asgalon does take a, top, a couple of turns to really get going. Like, he has enormous mid and late game potential, but in one of those games where, I mean, that guy pretty much drew the nuts. Like, he had, he had very good cards to play right from the very beginning. He played the right things, he did the right things, and, like, we're just, we're just not a deck that can get board presence early. Against decks like that, you either have to have a lot of AoE, um, if we had had, for example, a Prophecy, Prophecy could have helped us out. Prophecy could have drawn some cards, cleared out some of those Zealots, um, made it a little less likely for him to be able to do this sacrificing thing. But as it happened, I mean, his combination of the sacrifice into a demon, the demon he got, and uh, the Ashen Circle on top of it was nigh upon impossible to overcome. I will, I will stand by that. I don't, I don't think there's anything you could really do there. I am of a okay, so we have a we have I a tough opponent here, Sanak. 
Um, Sanakt is one of the guys I kind of struggle with, so I'm, I'm curious to see how this will work. Um, I don't, I feel like I don't usually win these, but maybe we can pull something out. We got enough cards here that we can probably kill this Psyker next turn. Um, that is to say, obviously, if he does not put something else of significant value out. Okay, so we're probably going to kill that instead. Mm, well. Okay, because we do have we do have the Janus coming up. Um, Interesting. I think we bane and kill the Psyker. Because, I mean, it's it's Psyker 3 at this point. Like, we, we cannot give him Psyker 3 sitting on the board, just doing absolutely nothing. Um, and we'll go ahead and trade that to make it so at least it dies when he hits us. Um, it's already really done its work, but like, I think that's a, I think that's kind of acceptable. Getting, getting that Psyker 3 off the board is, is a pretty big deal. Um, we're hoping, he's got three cards. He draws one, so he has four cards out of his deck to come up with anti-stealth or big enough AoE, like, you know, just a one AoE or a cleave one or something is not going to do it for us, or for him rather. Um, so I think it is just Janus in the event, and we'll go ahead and kill this off. Last Stand is such a crucial card. In fact, if I have another one, I'll try to remember after this. Okay, that's going to be annoying. But maybe we can... Oh, that's going to be really annoying. Yeah, so we're not, unfortunately, we do not have a drilling site, so we cannot prophecy reveal. Um, we could hit the barrier. I mean, we could prophecy, hit the barrier, stealth, or uh, sneak this guy, and command bridge is probably our best option. Yeah. Okay, I think that's, that's really it. It's... Prophecy. Yeah, hit the barrier. Uh, take this guy off the board. Active ability and Psycho 1. And we'll go ahead and command bridge now. And we're getting close enough that I think Host is going to be good for counter flood. We are running ahead on cards. I mean, not drastically, but we're we're... You know, when you're at the three card, like three, one, two, or three cards, you're kind of just playing, you know, with what you got. Like, you're, you're not in the greatest of shape. I mean, he's really, he's running out his cards hard. So, we'll see. He Now, then again, he's also hitting us very hard. So, there is something to be said for the fact that, you know, that's, that is also happening. Um... We can't really afford to take another six to the face. I think it's I think it's just gotta be that. Yeah. Spear might have been the better choice. Um, I was counting on him not really. Usually these Sanak guys don't run uh, particularly large troops. So Usually you would not see quite as many big troops. He, he has definitely got some big troops going on, though. Definitely, definitely. And our counter flooding does not work here. Um, he's just setting up for lethal. Yeah, we're, we're kind of stuck. Um, like I said, I mean, Sanakt is, uh, Sanakt is tough. I think the Tiburel gives us the best chance to potentially distract him, but it seems very unlikely. Oh, uh, where were you? Where were you, Judgment of Angels? One card earlier. Instead, well, I guess Tiburel was one card earlier, so maybe that wouldn't have worked. But, still not, still not good. 
So he's got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So he can put me into Survivor. Yeah, the Ashen Blow comes out, and that's really the end. So you can put me down to the one health, and then it's 22 to 1, and that's the end of that. So it doesn't really matter what he has for other cards. Um, yeah, because, I mean... Oh, and again, we're one energy short. We could otherwise... Uh, maybe we draw a Drilling Sight. Who knows? Uh, no Drilling Sights. So I was going to say, if we had one more energy... Oh, we, we still couldn't attack this. Because it's, uh, it's pre-cocked, so, unfortunate. So, Esplan, uh, Esplan having hard games here. Like I said, Sinoct is, is a surprisingly tough Warlord. I, I really, I think he is, he is really challenging, man. Two games and we've done all of 23 damage to the enemy Warlord. That is not a good sign. That is not a good sign. Speaking of bad signs, really killing it so far today. We've got our arch nemesis, the arch betrayer, Luther, the archest of all things arch. Uh, we will skip shock assault. We will skip host. We will keep Bane for his annoying early troops. Madness and escape vent is good. Madness and escape vent is is definitely workable. So is Janus. Okay, we've got Sangos up our sleeve for later. Sangos don't come in as handy against this deck. They're not bad, but they're... I mean, he's not, like, typically playing those huge troops. He's got a couple, uh, like, six sixes that Sangos work pretty well against. Other than that, it's it's not really as big a thing. I'm going to save the uh, vent for the Janus. I could just play the Mattatus right now, but since he is not playing, we'll just go ahead and draw. Now, I mean, we're, we're super heavy on troops. We've got... I mean, a, a large fraction. We've got half the troops in our deck uh, already in our hand. So that's good news for later. Okay, he just wants to keep hitting us. I'm, I'm really okay with that. Um, I think since we have two Janices, let's go ahead and uh, just go with the Janus and Stealth. And we'll return the favor and hitting his face. See, this is why I keep Band of Demons around, because this card is a this is a very obnoxious card. Um, Band of Demons is, is the perfect answer here. And we, we certainly ban. Yeah, certainly, certainly, certainly ban. And then we'll probably, uh, in lieu of drawing, we'll probably throw out the matter to squad. We could draw. I mean, it's not, it's not god-awful. But I think Mattatus is fine since we already have other troops in the hand and we're getting on. I mean, we're going to be on, you know, a turn to play Janus behind a front line next turn. We're going to be able to play Sangos the, uh, the, the turn after that. We'll be able to play Dawnbreaker behind front line after that. We've got a Prophecy already. Like, we're, we're doing pretty okay with this stuff. So let's see what he does. And he just lets the Mattatus come down. Okay, so we got another Mattatus too. So that's really, um, that's, that's, that's strong. That is strong, strong stuff. We could flank in the the problem. Is, so the issue really is, I mean, I kind of I kind of had the urge to play prophecy revealed to get those two off the board to keep Mattatus on the board to make him deal with it. Um, yeah, I kind of I have the urge to play prophecy revealed, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Because when you have an urge, you just you just follow your urges. That's advice from Automatic Jack. Um, I'm going to remove this here. I'm going to probably foresight the Mattatus, hit him in the face, and hit him in the face again. So now, even if he manages to ping the Mattatus once, like if he somehow gets flank on one of those uh, on one of those uh, Jaegers. I don't know. Can you guys see my cursor showing up in the video? This is very strange. My, my cursor looks odd. Even if it came out with flank, it wouldn't be able to do it. So, okay. So we can get his Magron veterans. Whatever. That doesn't do anything. That's that is not going to be sufficient. 
So we can actually, uh, we, we can do some clever business here. Um, we could either just Sango this, hit him in the face, again, more. Because um, we do we do have to worry about his duplicitous troop putting out. Um, or we could potentially last stand this, putting it out of range. What is going on here? We could last stand this, putting it out of range, letting it hit him a ton. In fact, yes. Why don't we do this? We will last stand this. Kill off his big troop. Hit him in the face. Now we got three health and Survivor 1 on it. And we'll just take another Mat- Do we take another Matadus or do we take another card? I think we take another Matadus because we want aggression. And we just keep- we just keep trying to burn him down. I mean, this guy is golden, but he's not doing that much. He's not doing that much. He gets his Ramiel out. Okay, it becomes a three. He, he does he does knock it down to the one. And at the cost of some decent cards, manages to eliminate the Janus that was bugging him so much. But he's just got another Janus to deal with right now. Like, it's... Like, it's really... It's not that great. Right, I think Judgment comes out on this Janus. Kills this off. And the question is, do we go for yet another Matadus? And I think the answer is yes, because we just want unlimited aggression. We just want as much aggression as we can get on the table. I mean, so now he's, like, basically where he was at on cards. He's back a little bit lower than he was on health, despite the healing. And he has a worse board to deal with on our end. So, things is not looking fantastic for him. Okay, so Sangos can take care of this. Um, or actually, oh, no, even better. Um, we'll just go ahead and take this down. We'll Spectre, because we can still deal with his, uh, his big spread. And then it doesn't even matter, because we will just kill him. Okay, so all that was not intentional bad manners, it's just a bad, you know, player. This is, this is just Jack is not not good at game. Jack bad. Okay, so onwards we go. And we guess the peacock. Old Fulgy. And the eternal question: Do we keep prophecy revealed? I think the answer is yes. I think we keep all of this except for host. And we get Crimson Spectre, which, while good, is not immediately good. I would have preferred a spear. Have not seen a lot of spears with Telesto. Had a chance for one in Crucial Choice. Didn't take it. And Crucial Choice was like, well, you know what? Fine. If you don't want what I offer you, you will never have it. There's a foresight. Would have been funny if a spear had come up there. And we'll just get that on the board. So he's definitely going to throw these guys into the face before they get wasted to counterattacks. But this gives us a little bit of hitting power. It gives us a little bit of defense against random shots. What? Okay. Yep, roger that. Sounds good. I will definitely take the trade there. Definitely, definitely take the trade there. And now, once again, we're, we're fairly troop-heavy. So we're, we're kind of sitting on... Sitting on some good options. We have few troops, but man, they're tough troops. Seems like an opportunity for prophecy. Also seems like an opportunity for Lord or Squad. It does leave the Lord or Squad fairly vulnerable. But it may be... I don't know. Um, we're at nine cards. We play the prophecy... Yeah, prophecy doesn't seem really that great. I think we just, I think we just order. And probably would have been better in retrospect to hit it with our face, but we did preserve a little bit of face, I suppose. 
preserve three extra health. But Lorder gets its work done, so I'm, I'm cautiously okay with that. Maybe he'll just leave that one there too. Bane comes out at a critical juncture. Probably the best, best possible opportunity for Bane. Um, we will throw the... Will we throw the Matadus or will we draw? I think we will throw the Matadus because we're going to need uh, cards. Or what am I saying? We are, we are going to need troops more than we need uh, just cards. So yes, he can crack the drop pod. He uses his Warlord action. He uses his troop to get rid of our troop. It's okay value. Like, it is trading a 2 for a 3, but... Goes for face with the Agnomen. Oh, yeah, well, never mind. It doesn't go for face. It does damage to face. I had it in my head that you could choose. Uh, so. Now we are in uh, a little bit of trouble. Probably because Jack is not a smart man. There's the Spear of Telesto. Once again, daylight and a dollar short. And we'll get that drop pod down. Now, the drop pod, it, Janus is an amazing counter to Agnomen. It is the ultimate counter to Agnomen. But. It helps to have a Janus on the board preventing Agnomans, not uh, dealing with them after they already slam into your already weakened face and put you down to 11 HP. That is, that is uh, again, a little, bit, a little bit behind the power curve. But he doesn't seem to have an obvious way to get rid of this, or else he likely would have played it. He seems to be calculating, hoping for a tactic that will do damage. Not great. Oh, great. I had uh, ward and all sorts of other things. Yeah, really, really outstanding there. Okay, and we have absolutely no answer to that. There is nothing that we can do. We cannot uh, hit it. We can foresight ourselves. We can foresight ourselves. That is that is the uh, the absolute best bet. And it's still got ward, and we are done. So, really, uh, really tough. Really tough. Good program. That uh, draw five cards, refill energy, uh, everything else, that is such a good card. Unfortunately, it is, I think, the only Emperor's Children Legendary that I'm missing. If I see that card in the shop and I have the gems, I'm picking it up and I'm building an Emperor's Children deck because it is just unbelievably powerful. Unbelievably powerful. If you, like, just take two turns with more cards at uh, like the fourth turn of the game. Uh, I don't think we even keep prophecy here. We will keep spear. I am lost of the I'm actually reading the buried dagger I am right now. Advance. Reading the buried dagger, which is about Mortarian. Kind of the uh, death guards fall to chaos. Well, not fall to chaos. I mean, they were already working for Horus, but their, their transformation from uh, relatively secular space marines into uh, the Death Guard that we know and love in the eventual 40k universe. Okay, so we can't uh, we can't do all that much here. We can't draw. We can uh, more or less pass. We could probably command bridge. Command bridge, and I think taking the taking the flank is probably good and my reasoning for this is we're not going to get to draw much because Mortarian is going to stun us over and over and over again yes so I think just like okay so just stunning us you know is that is that really doing so much it's preventing us from drawing an extra card that's true but we'll just uh, we'll go ahead and blast him and now, if he puts out a troop, we can Matadus it, we can get a new Matadus, we can draw another card. Like, this will make up for some of the some of the nonsense. And this is this is a perfect example. So, I mean, yeah, could not could not be more perfect timing with this. So we put out the Matadus, we judgment, we draw, Matadus flanks in, gets us a new one, and survives. I mean that's that's a good turn. That's what we like. This guy has an incredibly complex knife. Didn't see the rank. Oh, okay. 
Eh. Probably would have been better save for when there was like a host of angels or something like that. Um, eh. It's alright. Well, healing two to the warlord when the troop dies is all well and good, but we have options on options here. We can bane and prophecy it. We can bane and face it. We could just lorder it. I think that's probably the answer. And we'll go from there. Maybe this baits the other white grenade as well. It is it is possible. He seems willing to use them fairly early. Fairly fairly quickly. Okay, gets the motor to for the poison and decides to kill it anyway. Okay. Matadus comes out. And I think we just double bane it. Does that seem right? No, it doesn't seem right. It's better to give up the health, and we'll actually make the Matadus bigger. Yeah, so now we got a 5-4 Matadus. He's got to deal with the drop pod. He, he can stun it, but... I mean, he'd have to stun it and poison it to get real effects. Okay, yeah, so he uses a, a hard removal on a Matadus squad. Like a 7 energy hard removal on a Matadus squad that we've already got another one on. Ooh, swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. So we'll get our biggest boys out there. Uh, better than the Matter Squad. Matter Squad is better when it comes down behind the uh, behind the front line. Okay. I suppose that's all right. The urge to spear that is real strong, but instead we're going to just host. And we, I think we have enough HP leeway that we can still. We are, we're getting a little low relative to him. I don't like being nine points behind. That's that's. We don't have sufficient card advantage or board advantage that we'd be um, super comfortable with that. But I mean, we've got a decent amount of board advantage. Ah! There! Okay, so we made a terrible blunder by playing that Kaiser lane. That was an enormous, enormous mistake. Uh, we have easy access to Spear. Death Trap goes away. Uh, the Bane of Demons kills the Kaiser lane. And we have enough to still draw... We don't draw very well, but whatever. Now we can get the Matadus for pressure. And now let's see if he's got that other flight grenade. So, half a card ahead. Still got a threatening board. Managed to pull ahead on health. And managed to get rid of one of his most dangerous troops. Definitely a very dangerous troop. So, Sango's just to eliminate the threat. Then I refill my vape because I've forgotten to do so. And it looks like we've got this one pretty much sewn up. Mortarian is not a an opponent without options, but he cannot consistently work his stun against... Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, he's got heals, he's got stuns, but he's not in such good shape that, you know, it's... it's oh, it, in fact, it doesn't even matter because we've got the Spectre, so... Makes no difference. We see the lethal. Unlike our last video, all of you watching who... All of you... Uh, those of you watching who uh, have seen our last video, Us Missing Leader, didn't miss it that time. Alright. So.
so there we have, and we even got our challenge up to, we even got our challenge up to 118 damage. I think that's 118 damage over the course of five games. Um, yeah. Yeah, rough. But, hey, not bad. It's it's still fun to play as Ascalon. I really enjoy playing as Ascalon. I think he's a fun guy, um, uh, unlike his extremely serious voice acting, <laughs> although I do like his taunts. Uh, he, he has that element of randomness that makes it kind of fun. Um, speaking of randomness, I'm going to, I think at this point, play some poker. So I will see you gentlemen in the next video, gentlemen and ladies. If there are ladies out there, other than one lady I know who watches these, I will uh, see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe if you liked it and or want to subscribe. This is Automatic Jack signing off.